Now, Israel has launched more airstrikes and shell attacks in Gaza, while tanks and troops have been digging in along the eastern border. Palestinian officials claim more than 300 people have now been killed in the violence. Two Israeli soldiers were also killed in a clash with Hamas fighters who emerged from a tunnel, while militants continued to fire rockets into southern Israel. From Gaza, our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Miller reports. This is now a full-blown emergency. Ambulances chase the booms that reverberate across this city. There is now a steady flow of often hideously injured people. 2,500 wounded in just 12 days. 340 dead, more than 70 of them children. In a tent outside Shifa Hospital, wailing women from the Abu Jarad family of Bet Hanun, a village just northeast of Gaza City. Eight family members were killed by an Israeli tank shell in their home last night. Four were children, the youngest just two. <coughs> Noura Al Huda Abu Jarad is six. Her name means light of the Quran. She survived, just. Her hair is still matted with her blood. Hinud, her mother, had just put Noor to bed when hell came down and the family was blown to pieces. Suddenly, rockets came down with no warning. My uncle was hit first. His body parts flew across the room. As we ran, another rocket hit the house next door. My children were running around in panic. Noor was completely covered in blood. Ambulances came within half an hour and started collecting body parts. Even today, they found legs, arms, hands and feet. The family had fled from a nearby flat when three people were killed just outside. They'd sought refuge with relatives. Then that house was targeted too, which is why they were where they were last night. I will never forgive those who killed our children. What have these children done to deserve this? Are they carrying guns? They are targeting children because they don't want them to grow up to resist. Would you be okay if this happened to your children? We will continue to resist inside Palestine until the last day of the world. As we left them, Hanoud began to pray quietly. May their children die like our children, she said. May they taste what we taste. In the next bed, Shaima al-Masri, aged four, was being comforted by her dad, Ibrahim. They'd been trying to flee Betanun when Ibrahim went back to get precious papers. His wife and two of his children were hit by a rocket. Only Shaima survived. A shard of shrapnel went straight through her body. All the most severely wounded cases end up here in Shifa Hospital. But even in times of relative peace, doctors and surgeons find it hard enough to offer the specialized care that's needed. Now, though, they're strained to breaking point. But the ambulances, they keep on coming. If the situation continues like this, the, the whole uh, health sector will collapse. Uh, this is an unbeatable situation in which the situation has been for a long time overstretched. Now, on top of that, we have this crisis that adds burden to the, in, to the entire uh, and the global uh, uh, picture in, in Gaza Strip. There were casualties in Israel today, too. An Israeli Bedouin Arab man died when one of more than 60 rockets fired today by Palestinian militants hit a village in the southern Negev desert. Two children were injured. Reports tonight that two soldiers have now been killed too, bringing to five the number of Israeli dead. Today in the southern Gaza Strip at Khan Yunus refugee camp, they buried nine people killed in just one airstrike late last night. But in Gaza, this conflict is not just about those killed and wounded. Nearly 11,000 people have now been left homeless. 1,800 homes completely destroyed in Israeli strikes. Jonathan Miller, Channel 4 News, Gaza.